So guys, this is it. This is the final of the HWBOT World Series here in South Africa. We are seeing Vivi against Dr. Wiz. So that's the number two overclocker Vivi against the number one overclocker of South Africa, Dr. Wiz. This is the top of the top final here in uh, in the HWBOT World Series. This is uh, we are at Rage in Cape Town, and uh, we will have these two uh, best overclocker. To, uh, to start um, doing the drawing. I'm being uh, joined here by uh, Ligoft from uh, Belgium. Ligoft, uh, welcome back. Um, yeah, thank you very much. And uh, we will be tuning to uh, our um, our judge, uh, Peter, Hello. for the drawing. So they will have to draw one of the benchmark and each of the overclocker have okay. one veto in case uh, they don't want to bench that. So let's go for the first draw of the benchmark. Peter. All right. So let's uh, let's pick the first benchmark. Uh, so it's a reference clock. Who's videoing that one? <laughs> <laughs> so that's the thing. None of them want oh, to veto. But no one wants to veto <laughs> reference clock. I'll veto it. So. Uh, I'll veto it. So okay, Andrew is vetoing. Andrew is vetoing the benchmark. All right, let's go for the next one. So now <laughs> only Vivi can veto. What is yeah. the next benchmark? Xt11. Ah. Uh, uh. <laughs> so you still have, Nobody. you still have a veto left. No, I'll take Xtu. I could veto that. Then Geekbench comes up. All right. So uh, Xtu is the benchmark then. Yeah. All right. So just uh, just wait. We're gonna wait for the live to get ready, and then. So this is it. This is it. Actually, <laughs> that, <laughs> it's like, come on, what? <laughs> dude, wait, dude, wait, me next to you. That that's actually quite fun to see this uh, this kind of uh, <laughs> this kind of uh, vetoing stuff happening. So the first bench, so the first benchmark that they drew was reference clock. So they had to reach the highest uh, base clock frequency they could have. But none of them wanted to have it. But the thing as well is none of them wanted to use their veto against that one because something else after can be more uh, beneficial for one of the other overclocker. So let's say Dr. We say, okay, I veto it, no problem. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm taking the risk to veto that and have a benchmark that is uh, favorable to, uh, to Vivi. And Vivi, the second benchmark was XTU and they, they look at each other and say, okay, do we really took that one? Because if you veto it, the next benchmark, we don't have the choice. We have to do it. We have. To. That's the thing. And then Vivi says, "Oh yeah, it's, it seems like okay, like we veto XTU and the next one is Geekbench, and I don't want to bench Geekbench, and both of them don't want to bench this benchmark. So that's why it's uh, quite uh, quite interesting to, uh, to to see this uh, this video and things. What did you think, Bigoft? Yeah, it, it's really weird for me. Like uh, XTU, okay, Andrew already did the reference clock. Vivi, if you look at the qualifiers, so he beat Andrew there. So maybe he's placing a, a, a safe bet on XTU. I don't know what the, ro the problem is with Geekbench, in fact, because it's quite fun. It also scales with, with, with memory and timing. So for me, it's a little bit lighter than, than XTU. And I, I don't know, maybe doesn't Vivi had like a lot of experience in, in Geekbench that he just played maybe safe? Just, and I said, maybe okay, just I beat personal, Andrew. Maybe yeah. just personal opinion then. So uh, I just got the uh, the call from, um, from um, the judge, Peter, that we are ready. So Peter, you can do the countdown and tell the overclockers when they are ready to go. Okay, are you guys are you guys record? Vivi, are you ready? Yeah. All right. So you can start in uh, five, four, three, two, one, go. This is it. They are running for 30 minutes. This is the final of the HWBOT World Series here in South Africa. This is the top one Dr. Wiz of South Africa against the top two Vivi, uh, top two of South Africa. They are both the best overclocker in the country and they are fighting today for a place in the final of the HWBOT World Championship. That will be, uh, the final will be held in, in Germany uh, at the Case King uh, Gaming Room. Legal. You see your you see already the tactics going on from Andrew, like blowing all the vapors into Vivi's zone. <laughs> and Vivi is like, dude, what are you doing, man? This is all blowing in, uh, on, on my setup. That's no fun. So you see that there's, there's some strategic stuff going on here, like really interesting to see. And we got oh. a, a question on, on, the, on the chat as well by Sokolone. I hope I pronounced that one well. 
Isn't VV in this advantage here? It could be. I don't know if VV's CPU is as good as the one from Dr. Wee's, but at the five gigahertz limit, VV nailed Dr. Wee's score. So maybe he has the better timings and stuff like that. And, and Dr. Wee's indeed could just clock a little bit higher for the 3D Mark 11 benchmark. And, and we already see the, the blue team going up 12 12. So, so Dr. Really Wee's already clock. submitted a score, but he will be um, restarting the, uh, the, the, the system. Yeah, I, I, I just think he wants to see if XTU was indeed running properly, yes or no. It can happen that XTU just craps out or, or, or crashes or gives some weird error message when you try to run it. Or sometimes it just doesn't even run. So maybe Andrew just wanted to check what was going on here. So we are now on the VV screen. The red team is running XTU already. And yeah, we see a low a clock, 4.2 yeah, gigahertz, safe bet, having a score. That's gonna. That's what actually uh, Doctor Wiz did. He did a safe, uh, safe run. So he did uh, one thousand two uh, hundred and twelve points. So that's the very basic one at uh, almost at stock speed. They just want to have a placeholder. As well. Plus, I also think they are just loaded the memory profile and they just want to see. Okay, is the memory already stable? And if it is, we can just clock up the multiplier to to get the highest frequency. So they don't need to worry. Let's say about the memory crapping out the benchmark. Maybe that's the thing which is going on right here. That's gonna be crazy to see. So, full full out on the VV. Still didn't get any score, but that's gonna be soon. And then, oh, oh that's the exact same score. <laughs> that is the exact same score that they have. <laughs> this, that is quite, are, are, <laughs> quite are, fun to see are, at, uh, at first. Are we in a target OC competition? Something like uh, <laughs> target has been set, try to reach 12-12. <laughs> So this is Dr. Wisty. <laughs> He's running the benchmark. So this is also fun for us to commentate because when the XU runs, we can detect the frequency which is going. So let us see. So they're still running way below. Why are they I still think only they will running? Just go, they will just go step by step. They don't want to rush it. Yeah, you want you want to overclock, not underclock. We saw a run from Vivi at 4.2 and Andrew was like, like 3.9. So the clocks are slowly getting up with the core center in the windows and Vivi already torching the pot. Probably trying to glaze it maybe. That's funny that these guys came up with the exact same score. <laughs> Yeah, and if the last one was Andrew's screen, I don't know, he was only at 3.9, and if he did the previous run at 3.9 as well, and he matches Vivi's score with higher frequency, I think Am Andrew will be, like, comfortable of his memory timings. Maybe yeah. next time, let's say for the final, we should erase all profiles. Bam. Just do a BIOS yeah. reset. Go. Yeah, but how can you come prepared if you erase the profile? You will just uh, spend time. In, in the preparation before, you can just put them on the paper and just redo it. But I, I'm, no not quite sure that will, no I'm not quite sure that will help. It just it just adds up to the tension, like, uh, come on. Th these guys have spent, I don't know how many hours already on the board. I think I just think they can set probably most stuff just by heart, without even looking <laughs> on a paper or, or, or something like that. So this is Dr. Uh, the VV screen, the red team for today. Maybe they just want to keep things interesting for us to commentate on, like 12-12. <laughs> We're not going to post up any score. Just nope. boot in, reboot. Boot in, <laughs> reboot. Nope, not gonna do it. Not gonna do it. <laughs> they might have like a like a things going on. It's like, okay, dude, uh, I, I do 20 points more. And if I, if I beat you, you do 20 points more as well. Yeah, maybe they just do, okay, we'll limit the clock. We just do 4.5. Oh, no, we see 55 already going on. Let's see. Let's uh, push it. 5.4 on yeah. VVs. Yeah, it was 5.5 on the CPU and 5.4 on the Encore. Usually, most overclockers keep the Encore a little bit lower than the total CPU speed, just to be sure that, that everything matches. If it can run the CPU speed and you can later on match it with the Encore, you will get a boost again when score. But now they probably want to rule out if the Encore is not creating the instability so far. So for those quickly wanting to bench the MSI motherboard, do a quick print screen. You get like a lot of info on the screen, which is shown right here. This is all the best settings for from them. 
Uh, Dr. Wiz. Dr. Wiz is benching in 1,785 points. So he's taking the lead by a huge advance so far. Yeah, and, and the thing is for Vivi, he doesn't know which frequencies Andrew is running on. So he has just to do like a wild guess. Um, okay. It, it's Crazy. really fun because also with the memory they're using right now, I think we can do like a 1600-ish run normally on 4500 megahertz with the new BDI memory. So really memory that you can set in and dial in with tight timings. So these scores are not like world record scores, but for the given setups, probably they're like pretty good. And Let's also, like see. Daniel said, they're, they're on the wrong operating system. Should be 32 bits to have the max out score. And it's a blue screen! Yes, the first blue screen of the HWBot World Series right here. <laughs> I could not have waited for, for this one uh, longer. And that was on Vivi's setup, correct? Uh, that was on uh, Dr. Wee's setup. Oh yeah, the blue one. Sorry for that. We did put colors for people to have this much more easier to uh, <laughs> to, to catch on. I would I would rather have like the two screens, so side I can watch side? both. <laughs> yes, yeah, side by side. I'll just buy a bigger monitor and put my glasses on, <laughs> like this. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! I can I can hear myself back in the microphone from the live that is actually displayed <laughs> on the other side of the room. <laughs> Holy hell. So people are watching. Is it Giselle's, uh, Giselle, Vivi's girlfriend, maybe watching in the back on the laptop? She's there indeed. Uh, she's uh, uh, watching it at the premise. And like, there's a lot of smoke going on. Maybe she promised Vivi a new cat if he wins. <laughs> Well, at least the winner will uh, will have a f uh, free flight to Germany for the uh, SWBot World Championship final. Yeah, it will be very cool to to meet the guys again. I will meet them first, of course, at, at Computex again. But that's it. Doctor Wiz increased his score. So yeah, sorry, League of the Doctor Wiz increased his score eighteen hundred and thirty five points, and he's, he keep pushing it, keep pushing it to the to the max, keep pushing it to the max for that. Yeah, and he has like a pretty solid CPU already. If you can run like XTU 5800 on, on, on the CPU, which you're like not really acquainted with. I don't know how many minutes or hours uh, Andrew spent with this CPU, but it's going up pretty rapidly. So probably we might nail like six gigahertz as well. It would be interesting to see uh, what the guys would have to say after the... Uh, after. Yeah, maybe Andrew wants to buy that CPU because he was like <laughs> complaining on the stream that he had like some... Maybe he mixed up some CPUs uh, at a certain moment that he sold a CPU and maybe he sold his good CPU to uh, a forum member and then he, he kept like the crappy CPU. He did Im improve his score by <laughs> three points. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's just trying. If 59 multiplier is already at 1.8 volts, so really pushing the volts as well. Not taking any chance there that the system would cap out if it was too low on volts. We're just finding, trying to find a sweet spot now between temps and volts, probably, and just try to get it. I, I don't know if can PJ comment on on uh, the temperatures there at at the moment. Oh, wait for it! Uh, wait for it, PJ. We cannot hear you. PJ, you are uh, connected right now. So, what are the temperature of the guys? So, Doctor Wee is at minus one seventy five, and Vivi is at minus one forty four. So one close to full pot and the other one still maybe playing it safe and, and not wanting the Tim to crack again like he had 1856. before. That was like a, a real Formula 1 track uh, <laughs> quality stream <laughs> for the e, audio. <laughs> E-Formula, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, electric, the electric one. <laughs> so cool. on Vinny, the... He's always like waiting, and waiting, waiting. And it's a waiting. blue screen! <laughs> I so love this. That's 2 nil for Dr. Wee's then. We should have a counter. <laughs> a number yeah. of blue screen they have in the competition. <laughs> the one with the most blue screen pays the drinks in the afternoon. Hmm. That could be interesting. Hmm. Uh, I'd probably win. <laughs> <laughs> so there's less than 20 minutes left in this final of the South African leg of the HWBot World Series. Isel, Vivi's girlfriend, is uh, coming to Vivi and asking me, like, what's going on? 
You can do better than that. You used to do better than that at home. So, no cat for you. No cat for you. <laughs> well, uh, don't forget that we all stay at Vivi's house. So <laughs> we have okay. to go, we have to get some food at least <laughs> tonight after the, uh, the event. But that's gonna be the good the, the funny part. Like Dr. Wiz, uh, myself, Peter, and Tiara, we all stay at Vivi's house. So we will celebrate anyway tonight. <laughs> yeah. So it's not it's not that far from the venue then. Uh, it's a bit far, it's like um, like 20 minutes drive, but it's still okay uh, to, to be there. So let's focus back on this uh, final of the HWBOT World Series. And we are having the Tuiz benching like crazy. And also fun to watch, like Dr. Weez is like me, always standing up, and Vivi is like relaxed in the seat and just probably fine-tuning the, the, the temps. Uh, he really doesn't go like full pot, he's like really pouring it slowly in. So. I really think he wants to avoid that the pace will, will crack again in the final. And it just crashed, I think. And indeed, it crashed. It crashed. He's torching up the pot now. Torching up to... Um, maybe he, he was too low on the on the temperature. Maybe that's uh, that was one of the, uh, the issues. I think it was already at 5.9. So he's trying to maybe beat Andrew in, in just in raw frequency. Maybe not dialed in the memory timings as good just trying the raw clocks but this is tight this is tight already almost 13 minutes gone so yeah and dr wiz dr wiz doesn't seem confident about what's uh, what's going on he was like saying saying nay with his head like not quite sure what's uh, what's going to be going on so far the two overclocker are back uh, together on the uh, on the uh, booting the system that's it booting the system uh, going into the BIOS, uh, changing some of the settings, adjusting the uh, memory settings. Uh, let's go and see that a little bit more in detail. So 12, 13, 13. I think this is a, no, a wild guess. The, these timings are really tight. If it's, it's like D type memory, this is really tight, I think. Maybe he just lowered the frequency and just wants to go tighter. Because at a certain moment, many have, have already experienced it with XTU that it's not all about the raw or highest frequency possible. Especially with the guys with the 6320 CPUs, some have reached like the magic 742 or 743 score with just memory at 3,600 megahertz, while the other high scores were with memory at almost 4,000 and surpassing 4,000. So sometimes it, it's just about having a good run. A good run, like the good run. The ultimate run, let's call it like that. So we just saw on a Vivi uh, screen. BIOS is uh, he's struggling to boot up as uh, at a good uh, good frequency. Maybe he's having the same issue yet uh, just before with the crack on the on the CPU. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this is actually uh, one of the big issue with the over the extreme overclockers lately. But that's uh, you know part of the game. Indeed, many people are getting frustrated with with, with the cracking, and, and at the moment, many of us are like uh, testing. Uh, Roman made some uh, in internal heat spreader spacers like from 0 0.1 mil and we're trying to figure out like which is the ideal gap between the die and the internal heat spreader to put the paste on and, and at the moment today we benched with one millimeter and, and we could get like almost to, to, to full pot without cracking but my teammate didn't push let's say the voltages really high so uh, I have to redo it here but for me on, on, on water cooling only one spacer was like already good but it has no reference with with, with extreme overclocking of course that's a totally different oh, ball it uh, dr wiz was running at 5.9 gigahertz and it did crash so let's switch to vivi and vivi is at 5.5 gigahertz this time so i guess he's just want to uh, to be able to to do one of this uh, benchmark completely to have a better score than his uh, default one that he did put at the beginning of uh, of the of the run there's less than 15 minutes left in this final of the HWBOT World Series here in South Africa in Cape Town. Yeah, maybe Vivi is also just checking the memory timings he just said in the BIOS, if they can run, if it completes the run, and then again focus on the raw frequency of the CPU. That might be one of the techniques indeed to, um, to, to do it. Yeah, you, you don't have that much time to figure out what, what's going on. And sometimes, usually these boards, if we like, boot up the system like trains the memory and sometimes you get like this weird ah, 1800 score 1800 this is quite good that that's gonna be good because if you go to 5.6 oh 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 
So he just set 5.6 and it went and out. And then shut down. Yeah, shut down directly. Fuck. But if he managed this score at, at, at the given frequency, if he can raise it like one or two, he can nail Andrew's score. So Vivi at the moment is more efficient than Andrew. Just see if, if he can get the system properly booting again. Yeah? Let's see. Ah, he's installing the control panel. Maybe he doesn't want to use the, the core center light anymore. Maybe it, it has an issue somewhere. That's crazy. Let's go back to uh, Dr. Wee's screen. He's at 5.8 speed ratio. Yeah. And I think Andrew's best score was also at 5.8 at this moment, no? Because he tried a few times at 5.9, but that crashed all the time. So maybe he's going for the same clocks again and maybe trying to raise the Uncore to, to just get them extra points to grab that ticket for the Berlin final. Seems like you said you had some issue with the, the temperature. So we'll see what I, what's happening. And uh, Andrew is back at running the, the benchmark. You can see there's a lot of uh, smoke going on, a lot of LN2 smoke. Uh, LN2 is a negative 200 degrees. That is quite uh, quite crazy and quite insane to uh, get this uh, live, especially for you guys as well that are at home. Is there any question on the live chat, Ligov? Yeah, I don't see like uh, anything relevant at the moment at, at uh, what's exactly going that's, on. We that's, see tro Vivi, like that's trolling, basically. Yeah, there's always like a lot of people, of course, and, and a lot of people, of course, having no clue what, what we're doing. One of the most common questions today at, at the, the MSI Fan Day, of course, is can you game on this? Of course you can game on a liquid nitrogen <laughs> setup, but you have to find some LN2 monkey, as we call it, that constantly <laughs> pours LN2 into the pot. And yeah, that, it, it, it's a typical question that, that you get. Okay, it's normal. That's not something you can see quite often, and this is still a, a, a niche thing. But we are here today to help you guys out to understand what is going on. And these guys are uh, the best in the country. This is uh, Vivi is number two of the country. Doctor Wiz is the best guy in the country, in best guy in South Africa for these specific things, for these overclocking things. That is um, super fun to see uh, that uh, they are actually pushing pushing and pushing as much as they can and they are now back all together in the system they are both ready to bench ready luck ready to put on some awesome scores yeah and, and the, the 56 point lead is like 100 150 megahertz difference depending on on which memory you use like uh, skylake usually just scales with, with with raw frequency and usually it's like around 30 to 40 points so if Vivi wants to catch up with emery with Andrew, he really needs to raise his current frequencies or in tighten the timings to get a better score than Andrew. But that's the thing. Andrew is almost finishing the benchmark XTU at 5.8 gigahertz. The cache frequency is at 5.5. So let's see if uh, everything is fine. 1835, that is not improving his score so far and there's less than 11 minutes in this round. Let's switch to uh, Vivi. Vivi is now uh, still benching. If it yeah, if, if Vivi can get a better score now, Andrew is like 200 megahertz higher, Uncore is about the same, and Andrew is now starting a run with the Uncore and the core frequency matched. Well, Vivi did get a better score than he had before, but by two points. So I had to yeah, know two. <laughs> That's not going to cut it, of course, two points. He needs to find at least 60 points to, to, to snatch the lead. Is Andrew's setup still running? Andrew's setup is still running, and let's... Back to it. You also see the, the, the difference in approach. Andrew is like at 1.8-ish voltages already, and Vivi is still playing it like kind of safe with just below 1.7. So he, he really wants to avoid a crack. Ah, look at that. Yeah, getting closer to his uh, best score so far, but still not the, be the best score he ever had. He's quite you high in it? frequency. Yeah, he's trying the 5.9 run now. You see he's already close to 1.9 volts on the CPU. He runs, of course, full pot. I don't know if, if, if Vivi is going colder as well, PJ. Can and it's a blue one? screen! We so love it. We so love it. Yeah, we got a question on the chat for Droid Insanity. So, in, in, indeed, uh, they just got one CPU and they have to reuse this CPU all the time. So, it's not that you were unlucky and that you could swap it with one other one which was available. They got that CPU that would and be that too easy. is the one. That, that's the one that they have to use during the entire event. That would be too easy to uh, to just have one, C uh, like 
you can switch CPU as much as you want otherwise. Like, if you burn your CPU, you're out. That's the thing. In these 30 minutes, if you burn something, you're out. Whatever happened, you're out. There is no yeah. way for you to, uh, to be ready with uh, another system. And indeed, it's not allowed to have another system uh, in, this, uh, in this competition so far, in this format of competition. So yeah, this is one of the the biggest talks as well for the for the G Skill event as well. That that that's coming up probably at Computex again. That like last year we had the the Astro team which had like four or five motherboard spare. You still remember SK Lamb uh, facing off Vivi at I that Computex? I still do group? remember that these yeah. rules here are in place for the SW World Series for a reason to uh, yeah, make sure that everyone have the same uh, same chance. And this is it. Uh, both guys are back benching. Back benching back in the OS, uh, but it seems like Tuk Tau is just crashed. Crashed again. And when you crash, you have to torch. Torch crash it torch. up. Okay, Vivi trying another run. But it, it froze. Did crash. Oh, yeah, it okay. froze. It froze as well. Sadly, it did froze, and nothing we can do much about that. It will be very difficult for Vivi. Apparently, he can't run 5.7, so he, maybe he can match 5.6, 5.6 Uncore, but. To gain like 60 points or, or 55 points he needs. I don't know. I don't think it's happening. But never give never give up on Vivi. It's like uh, huh? in the previous semi-final, we thought you're like, okay, this is in the pocket for Quantum Max, and then at a certain moment that 16k was there. So like, boom, I'm there. Next one. That's that's yeah, these, extremely impressive from Vivi. He's super relaxed. He ne he's never stressed. Never stressed out. I think in the inside he's boiling now, don't you think so? Uh, it could be, could be. That's a, he's a inner cat that uh, <laughs> doesn't uh, <laughs> doesn't let the the fluff away. So yeah, this is it. Um, Andrew is back in his uh, system. The blue team of Andrew. He's just trying to improve his score, of course, and then just to to provide that final blow to his best friend. Of course, there is no no love here at this moment. This is a competition, and at the end, they probably will laugh and shake hands. But at this moment, it's tough versus tough. This is a this is a competition, my friend. There is uh, less than seven minutes now, and this is a competition. So ah, uh, badly, the screen of VV uh, did broke. Uh, it's time to torch. If you crash, you torch. That's the rule. <laughs> That's something we could do, like a like a like a jingle. You crash, you torch. Yep, less than six minutes, 30 Ooh, gone, and then indeed it, it's like screen. they cool down too much. Whoop ah, another one. This is getting Andrew's speciality now. We'll call him Dr. BSOD next time. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see uh, what happens booting the but system. He, he's comfortable, like. Uh, He's like watching or monitoring what's Vivi doing. How is it going? So Vivi is uh, quite a. Uh, I feel like Vivi is not stressed, but he's hyper concentrated. Isn't the BIOS going full speed? 1.65 uh, volt on the CPU. So he's actually going up on the CPU voltage now. But there's there's almost five minutes and thirty seconds left in this uh, in this final. That's that's gonna be uh, almost the the end for him if he doesn't uh, submit a good score and uh, catch up on Dr. Wiz. So they are fighting for a flight in December to go to the uh, uh, to the final of the HWBot World Championship. That's gonna be happening at the Case King uh, Gaming Room. That's extremely tight for them and it's very important. There's a lot of uh, for, for them being the first the the top two overclocker in their country is extremely important to perform at this event. Andrew yeah. benching XTU you now. But Vivi, of course, has still has got a shot at the Computex event, I think. So it's not that you entered like one time that you ha only have one chance. So probably he, he will be at Computex, Vivi. So probably he will be participating again to catch but that final ticket. Let's let's face it, Computex, that will be super tough. Especially just at the qualifier level, because there will be so many good overclocker right there. We will have almost all the best overclocker at the same location at the same time. So maybe like 30 overclocker at the same time. That's going to be super tough here. He knows he's yeah. already against Dr. Wiz, and they usually bench together, so they know exactly how they do bench. Like, oh yeah, you, you just usually spend that much time doing this or that much time doing that. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Uh, at Computex, at, at the current listing that we have, already I think the France event next week will be super tough as well. 
it maybe that's why, why Dankov already is coming, just to try maybe snatch it there. Because maybe at, at Computex, you also have the other big guys. All the big shots are there. So, And maybe he wants just to increase his, his possibility of, 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 of getting. So Vivi is improving his core side by side. So we have 1,500, 1,815 points uh, by Vivi. And we had uh, um, pretty much the same uh, score by, uh, by Dr. Wiz, 838. So he did not, Dr. Wiz did not improve his core for the past 10 minutes. And there is... Three minutes and 35 seconds left in this in this final. This is actually getting uh, quite intense here in Cape Town. And you see that Vivi has some issues with the with the core center light, and that's also something that we experienced today. You have to run it as administrator. That's one thing, and sometimes it crashes. And you just have to like sort of reinstall it just to get it get it done. But that's so that will make him lose some precious seconds. He wants to get the multiplier up, so probably <laughs> he has to find a way. Probably also why he hooked up the, the, the OC panel to the motherboard as well, just to maybe overrule the software and, and just get, try to get it out there. Dr. Wiz, 1843 points, still not beating his best score so far. Still not, still not. He's just teasing Vivi. He's like, oh, look at that. Oh, I no, do I cannot do all better. The time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Vivi setting up again, installing the fan, plugging in the, the dashboard again. Let's let's go, let's go, Vivi. You can do it. You can do it. Two minutes thirty left, guys. Okay. Come on. Okay, Vivi, Vivi, come on, come on. You you can go. You can go. See, Doctor Wiz oh. is being relaxed. He knows there's only two minutes and thirty seconds left. Less than that. That's gonna be quite uh, quite intense for the for the last few run. These guys are. Still not back into the system. They are rebooting at the moment. So that would be quite interesting to see. Two minutes and 10 seconds left. So this is it. They are now both back with the system up. On the blue side, you have Dr. Wiz. He's trying to go to six gigahertz. That's gonna be Whoa. quite, that's quite risky, but he knows that if these pass, Vivi cannot catch up on him. That, that's gonna be his like magic, magic secret. Yeah, if he really can can pull that one off, at, le at least he can put the pressure on Vivi. But I don't know, the, the 1856, I don't know, was it 5.8 run or 5.9 run already? Because he failed each time at 5.9. So why would he try 6 I, gigahertz? And no, it didn't work. Sadly, it didn't work for Dr. Wiz. And I think it was at, uh, it was at I don't think it was at 6. I think it was at 5.9. So this is it, the two guys torching now. They probably have Fighting. one time to boot into the, the system again and, and start the run just before time runs out because there's not that much time left. That's the thing. If they run the bench if they start the benchmark before the end of the round, we have to wait for the end of the benchmark to decide if the uh, if they if it's completely finished. So if they get a beta score in the last run, they can still submit it because the run was launched before the end of the uh, of the match. And there is 50 seconds left in this uh, competition that is super tight. You can see that Dr. Wiz is back into the operating system. Yeah, and Vivi's still looking at the postcode lad, so uh, he's trying to figure out from why does this post, what's going on? So we will do the countdown, 30 seconds left. 30 seconds left in this know. in this qualifier. This is super tough. I know still doesn't pass, still doesn't pass for Dr. 30 Wiz. 30 seconds left. Well, there's uh, 15 seconds left now. I think Andrew has it in the bag. Vivi is like, okay. This ain't gonna work out. G. Then this is it, one, and this is it, this is over, this is over, Vivi is uh, sadly not finishing this uh, this match in the, in the lead. Dr. Wiz, the number one overclocker in South Africa, is now the winner of the HWBOT World Series 2016 South Africa here in Cape Town. This is Congratulations. a very impressive uh, performance by Dr. Wiz, very impressive uh, score. He did manage to get a strong score straight from the beginning and then managed to keep up that, uh, that advance. Vivi was struggling to, uh, to get past him and that's how things end up. So Dr. Wiz is the winner of the HWBOT World Series South Africa. Congratulations, mate.
super super glad to uh, to see these guys. Likov, what do you think about Dr. Wiz so far? Yeah, I think it's a, a nice reward as well for Andrew because he's like promoting the overclock stuff with his uh, live streams like, I don't know, twice or thrice a week. So he's doing like a, a lot of things to promote, let's say, our favorite hobby. And it's fun for him to see that, that he has nailed it, in fact, today. He has spent a lot of time on the X-Power as well, so uh, quite good. And okay, maybe he was a little bit lucky with the CPU that he picked out because he could run like slightly higher clocks than Vivi. But that's all part of the game. It, it has been at every event where you get like the setup by drawing it, it you always have to have a little bit of luck involved but you, you probably will ask some uh, questions to we will Vivi try, we will try well. to have them on the we will try to have them on the on the show because that's going to be interesting to have these guys talk about what they did uh, what they did during this uh, the, the, during this the, this match so i guess we can uh, we will be able to to have all of them three with us, so I guess we can. Uh, we will be able to start with uh, with Quantum X. I'm pretty sure he's uh, ready to to come and uh, talk a little bit about uh, his match so far. It's like I said, it would be really cool for him to have just his insight on on Skylake overclocking and 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 what he figured out in in only let's say half a day or a day, experiencing LN2 on on the the latest Intel CPU and of course the X Power motherboard, how he could dial in. So I see he's like installing, and uh, I'm going to shut up now and and leave the floor to you guys. <laughs> thank you very much, uh, thank you very much, Ligov, and I we managed to have uh, Quantum X with us. Uh, here on uh, on the live, we're just uh, setting up, and uh, here we are. Hey, Quantum X, how are you doing? Oh, so, oh, wait, 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 wait. How are you doing? I'm better now. I'm relaxed already, and uh, <laughs> it was fun watching the final. <laughs> so yeah, actually, you were uh, quite stressed right after the uh, you finished the match. So that's why I wanted to uh, wait a little bit before uh, doing this interview with you. So um, how how was it? So first of all, how was your 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 um, your uh, mind just before starting the match uh, you had? Well, I um, obviously knew from the qualifying I didn't have the efficiency that um, Vivi had, so I knew that I had to beat him on um, CPU frequency, which I almost did. Um, I ran 5.8 gigahertz. I think he only went 5.7, but on with my more frequency, he still beat me due to efficiency. So I went for the 5.9 gigahertz on the last second, uh, but unfortunately the system crashed. So you know I was shivering all over. <laughs> <laughs> that that was uh, that was quite intense. Um, what what would you um, what would you uh, veto in terms of uh, of benchmark in this uh, in this competition if you had to do it again? Um, I would say also a reference clock, um, the same as what they did in the final. I would veto that, and um, I was thinking GPU Pi. Um, the two of those I would have called out. The reason is uh, because you don't feel safe using this uh, this benchmark or the reference clock. Yeah, it's, for me, it's just a lack of experience in both. Um, I mean, I've probably once or twice only did um, GPU Pi with extreme cooling and reference clock on Z170 not at all even so for me it was just the, the lack of experience with those two benchmarks yeah so how do you feel uh, having your first live competition here and uh, finishing in the final and finishing third yeah it was actually very exciting like I said I was so excited after the, the finish of that match I was shivering and stuff so it's it's quite a rush and um, I would love to do it again that's for sure so you were you were fighting on the 3D Mark 11 physics core, and uh, how uh, how was that? Were you confident when you had this benchmark uh, bench benchmark coming, or you were like, oh damn, I have to do as much as I can to not uh, to not be a uh, point behind? Yeah, like I said, um, it, we ran it in the in the qualifying, so I had an idea of what what needs to be done, and that's why you know I thought um, to actually get the the higher CPU frequency. Um, so, yeah, it was also, you know, a bit of technicalities going on with uh, my higher score, what, which wasn't actually, <laughs> um, you know, declared um, legal by the by the judge. Um, he wasn't around then, and I restarted the PC before he saw the score. So, but um, I mean, it wouldn't have changed the result. So, it's it's all good, man. <laughs> so y you came here first live, uh, first live event, first live competition, if you need third, you were fighting against the top two. 
of uh, Vivi is actually number two in South Africa, and you could have you you fought in the qualifier against uh, the number one in South Africa, that is Dr. Wiz, and that is definitely the number one now because he's uh, actually winning this uh, this event again. So, how do you feel benching around the, with with these guys that you do know already and uh, bench with them before? Yeah, like um, like you say, I know them already. So for me, it's not so much you know about the rank or whatever. For me, they're more like you know pals. We know each other. Um, we we have had um, you know casual sessions together. So for me, I had more more of that feeling. The only thing that added to the competition sense was obviously the time limit, and um, you know I would say the also the fact that if you don't win, then you won't go through to the next round. So yeah, but. To bench against them as as friends, that was that was actually fun. You know, it's the first time because usually you're on the same team and you you try and achieve something together, and now you're actually competing against each other. <laughs> <laughs> But still, you're we're we're all still friends here, and <laughs> even if we're competing, it's like it's a little bit of a thrill to uh, to have that. Um, talking of uh, limitation in time, um, do you like the 30 minutes bracket like this? It's super tough. Yeah, it's, it's very, very tough. Um, and I was actually glad we got 3D Mark 11 physics instead of XTU like they did, because I would only imagine if I had to run XTU in 30 minutes, that would have been crazy. So, no, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, our would have been better, but then again, it wouldn't be as exciting. And I know, you know, that that's what we need with stuff like that. It needs to be very, very exciting. Uh, League of, do we have any question for uh, Quantum X? Yeah, how, how did you experience Andrew? In fact, uh, the new platform because, like yesterday, you said like uh, in in the previous uh, overclocking show that you didn't have any experience with Skylake and Z170. How, how did you find the platform regarding other CPUs that you have benched before? It was uh, pretty straightforward. Um, you know, all K model CPUs are straightforward. You set the multiplier and the voltage, and then. But um, obviously, I haven't mastered the finer things like um, this. You know, the secondary voltages to get the cold bug down. I was only doing like minus 120. Um, I had no secondary voltages set, so definitely I have a lot to learn. But um, I think it's a good platform, and I should be able to learn it quite easily. Yeah, That's it's a new uh, world record-breaking platform, in fact. <laughs> yeah, and uh, <laughs> the, the, these guys here were, keep in mind that the, the motherboard, they had to use the MSI motherboard, that was on, uh, one of the requirements for, uh, for the competition, and they had to use the CPU that were provided. So these CPU were not tested before. That's the thing, they were not uh, sorted by, uh, by any means just being like in the, in the middle range of uh, what, what we could get for uh, uh, Intel Core i7 1600K. That's uh, that's still quite impressive that you guys managed to put out some uh, you know like good score, good show, uh, good uh, good setup for for this kind of live in th in 30 minutes. Uh, Quantum X, uh, what do you want to see and to say to uh, all the people watching the live and that did cheer for you during the uh, during the match? Well, yeah, I would um, if anybody cheering for me, I would say thanks for the support and um, yeah, it was um, definitely nice to be here and. Um, I was just, you know, thankful for the opportunity. That's uh, that's uh, perfect, and I'm sure all the people will uh, will like this. And as we can see, all the overclocker are uh, now gone, uh, like they are drying up their stuff. Thank you very much, Quantum X, for your time here on the on the live show. We're gonna uh, still see you a little bit later on tonight, and I will try to go pick up uh, Vivi for the next uh, next question. Ligoft, up to you. Yeah, so uh, some some nice information there by by Andrew. So in fact, yeah, overclocking indeed. You you have basic skills indeed. You know, uh, he also know how knows how to master the temp control and, and everything. But like he said, Skylake is like all about the secondary voltages that you have to dial in right, and each CPU indeed is different. Probably something Vivi might also go down to because indeed he, in the beginning he had some issues booting the setup. In the semi-final and i think he had some issues again with maybe the core center light and that's maybe one of the reasons why he had those weird shutdowns but back to you guys check check and we are back and we are here with number two of south africa and number two of the edge of world series here in south africa as well vivi how are you doing Uh, doing great, thank you. And uh, so, first of all, you finished second in uh, here in the HWBOT World Series uh, South Africa. How do you feel straight out of the uh, of the match? Uh, a little disappointed, just because 
my efficiency was uh, was good. So I just needed to run a little bit better frequency than what I was uh, to be able to get to match uh, Dr. Weezer's score. And my catalyst, the control center, not catalyst, control center, as soon as I click apply, it would crash. And I don't know if it was corrupt or if my ME was corrupt or what was corrupt, but I, I had to boot at my run settings and that frustrated me. So do you think you will have to relax a little bit before going home tonight? I'll, I'll, I'll relax at home. <laughs> so you won't try to uh, to kill Dr. Wiz in his sleep tonight then? No, my cats will do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, <problem>. th <laughs> that's a way of doing things yeah. without uh, <laughs> having any trace. <laughs> so. Uh, you, you the, the the let's let's go back to the uh, to the to the way the, the match uh, came in. The the first benchmark that was drawn was base clock, so reference clock, and you look at Doctor Wiz and Doctor Wiz looked at you and you were like, uh, "We don't want that. We don't want to veto, but I don't want to use my veto for this." Yeah. So how did you feel exactly at this moment? At that point, neither Doctor Wiz or I wanted to do reference clock, but there's a benchmark that I fear more and that is Geekbench or GPU Pi. So I didn't want to use my Vito because if I saw one of those benchmarks, I would definitely use it for them. So but I had to force him to use it, to, to use yeah, his Yeah, but Vito. it could have been the same for him. And I think that was the same for him. He didn't yeah. want to use it for that because they could have a worse benchmark coming up after. Yeah, I'll, I'll sit with reference clock before I sit with GPU Pi. <laughs> so it almost went on with reference clock. Yeah, and that would have been terrifying. <laughs> Did you test uh, that uh, that benchmark before? No. <laughs> so that would be like completely new for you as well. Yes, we would both be very frustrated, I think, trying to do that one. That that would actually be quite funny. It would, would have been funny, yeah. yeah very. <laughs> so uh, moving on, and then uh, you uh, you guys choose to go for, for XTU. Well, once again, you didn't want it to use your veto against XTU because it could get something worse. I was happy with XTU because uh, in the previous round I, I did win the XTU stage because I had my memory timings uh, nicely dialed in because I this board just did well with this memory set. So I was confident with XTU, I just needed some CPU frequency to go with it. And uh, didn't work out quite well in the end, so what happened? Well, I got, a, I got close enough to see that the potential was there. but. At 5.5, I got 1800. At 5.6, I got 1800. At 5.7, I got 1815. So it was frustrating to go 200 megahertz without seeing the increase in the score. Did you think there's, there was something wrong in one of the settings that you did uh, you did set, or? I don't know. I'll have to go go look, but there must be something wrong either in the ME or maybe even something in the BIOS that that I set that made my control center not accept any multiplier changes. And also, I don't know why I got 1800 at 5.5 5 and 1815 at 5.7. 5 Maybe it was a, just a good run at 5.5. 5. So will you be testing back at home to see what was the issue right there? Or you would just not want to... Today. <laughs> oh, not today. Of, of course not today. Of course not today. I think local time is already like a, almost a quarter to ten. So that's going to be quite late. Yeah, yeah. But, well, that's going to be quite late. But you've been benching almost all week when every one of us were <laughs> going to bed. You were benching. Yeah, because I recently uh, found a really good chip and I, I just had to try it. So uh, the only time I had was between like 1 a.m. and sleepy time. <laughs> that that You are crazy, you are crazy. And, um, and that was a quite entertaining <laughs> final for us, to, to be yeah, honest. Yeah. So do you feel relieved now? Or yeah. Or that it's over? Or how did that build up along the, uh, along the match? Um, what did it... Yeah, it, it built up... Uh, because I did want to win in the end. Before the competition, I thought, nah, I don't necessarily, maybe I won't be able to go to Berlin or something at the end of the year. Or, so I've, it all factored into my decision making. But in the end, I, of course, I wanted to win. So <laughs> I'm relieved. We, we now. I'm relieved that, yeah, I'm relieved that it's finished because it's very deserving of Dr. Wee's. He's been overclocking a lot. He's been doing the live stream. And uh, you know, it's it's he's pushing overclocking at the moment, so he very well deserved victory. <laughs> That's insane. Uh, Lee Goff uh, from uh, Belgium, do you uh, are you ready to uh, ask some question to Vivi here? No. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't. Okay, so that we don't answer. 
<laughs> no, no. W- 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 do you have anything against Geekbench, Bibi? But that, that's what, what Truth said. I haven't so run he... it in my life, so I'm, I'm fear, I fear it to run it for the first time live. No, because like it, it, it's like same with, with XTU, so it scales with, with speed. It ah. needs also stability for the memory, so it's, it's practically the same. Thanks, I should have asked you before that. <laughs> yeah, but I think you were like too bad in a disadvantage with, with the yes. raw s- CPU frequency. That was the yeah. thing. Because I, to- I told Truth during the live chat, you did a very efficient run at 5.5. And I said, if you can match like 100 megahertz, normally it should scale like what, 30, 35 points easily. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I, <clears throat> that's what I was hoping. And in my pre-testing, I finished the 6.1 Cinebench, so the CPU had more than enough megahertz in it. It just, it just did, it didn't come. And, and and do you have any idea why during the semifinals it it cracked? Because that was also the issue that you had. It actually cracked. It was actually cracked from the very beginning, uh, and I don't know why. Because I've been using Dan Cop's method for a while, and it's been working 100% every single time. So I was uh, disappointed that I even ran with a crack, and it was cracked from the beginning. So all my problems were related to that. So I thought when I fixed the crack this time, I, I wouldn't have any problems, but that's definitely not the case. That's did we see Andrew like like messing around with his setup before? Truthman, do we have video footage of that one? No. Like over there. No, 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 nothing. <laughs> no, no, no proof. Of okay, no not. problem then. No, no, Just not, not, not no proof. No, no, he did nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Will you try again at Computex, Phoebe, to qualify? Um, you know, we always say, uh, maybe we won't enter. Maybe it's too expensive. In the end, we all enter in anyway. So. I'll definitely be thinking about it and I might give it a go. I already have some memory coming, so I'm definitely going to try. But I'll definitely be at Computex and I'll try for the G-Skill competition. Okay, cool. See you there, man. Yeah, see you there. That's going to be quite interesting to see all of you guys in June at Computex. uh, And uh, as well as some of the uh, European guys that we did talk about doing this live show in uh, Europe next weekend. Uh, Thank you, Vivi. Uh, Thank you very much for being on the stream. Uh, Wait for us before going back home because we all stay at the same place. (laughs) You drive with Andrew, I'm driving alone. Uh, okay, so you're just gonna go back home first and tell your cat that uh, everyone Maybe I'll lock the doors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> well, thank you very much for your time, and thank that you. was uh, super awesome. That was a uh, great job. You finished second at the Edgebelt World uh, Series here in South Africa. That's an awesome performance. Thank you. Asali, you didn't finish yeah. first, but you're the second best overclocker in South yeah, Africa, sh- and you're correct. now the second best overclocker in Nothing the World Series changed. in South Africa. <laughs> He's the best looking one besides Neo. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> well, uh, back to you, League of uh, Now it's time for me to go catch up the winner of this competition. Okay, uh, Truthman, so uh, going to fetch uh, Andrew and then uh, see what his point of view was on, 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 the, on the final, of course. I think, uh, indeed, he will, will tell us that uh, he had the megahertz advantage. So something which made it a little bit easier, probably. Like Vivi said, his, his 5.5 run was like damn efficient. And, and Andrew had to match it with at least 200 megahertz more. But at least Andrew's setup was like a little bit more consistent. Even with slightly lower clocks, he still remained in the same point region. While Vivi has some issue going on. Maybe the install went a little bit corrupt. Maybe indeed motherboard issues or, or the BIOS got a little bit corrupted that it didn't accept any multiplier. This is of course overclocking in its purest form. Uh, you can test and pretest so much at home and when it should happen, it doesn't work out. Usually when me and Massman did some sessions like for competitions as well, we were like struggling fighting the system during several hours and usually in the final stages, you will put down the magic score. Not maybe a world record, but at least a score to qualify. And, and this is the same. Now, of course, only a time limit of uh, 30 minutes, so not that much. If you guys still have uh, some questions on the chat, please do so. Maybe we can uh, post them straight to the winner, which is like uh, relaxing next to Truthman. He still has to put his headset on. And then we're good to go again with uh, Dr. Wees, uh, the winner of the World Tour Series at the Rage Expo Cape Town.